right. All right. All right, I'm going to call this uh, Tuesday, March 16th, Dumfries Town Council meeting to order. Uh, can we have the roll call, please? Councilman Brown. Present. Councilman Fields. Here. Councilwoman Miles. Present. Councilwoman Nabil. Present. Councilman Pete. Vice Mayor Nickerson. And Mayor Wood. Present. All right, we'll have a, uh, we have a quorum. So we'll have a moment of a prayer followed by the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Amen. Amen. Join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, next on our agenda is the adoption of the agenda. Council, any uh, changes or additions to the agenda? Okay, seeing none, town manager. Okay, none. I welcome a motion from the floor. Move we adopt the agenda. Okay, it's been moved. Is there a second? Second. Second by the vice mayor. All right, seeing no uh, discussion on it. Um, Councilman Brown. Aye. Councilwoman Miles. Aye. Councilman Fields. Aye. Councilwoman Neville? Aye. Vice Mayor? Yes. And that's a yes for me. The motion carries six zero. Okay, next on the agenda is a proclamation for the Women's History Month. Uh, Vice Mayor. I'm sorry, I didn't have it up. Give me a moment. <laughs> A proclamation recognizing Women's History Month. Whereas the month of March is nationally recognized as Women's History Month, and whereas American women of every race, class, and ethnic background have made historic contributions to the growth and strength of our nation in countless recorded and unrecorded ways, and whereas American women have played and continue to play a critical economic, cultural, and social role in every sphere of life of the nation by constituting a significant portion of the labor force working inside and outside of the home. And whereas American women have played a unique role throughout the history of the nation by providing the majority of the volunteer labor force of the nation. And whereas American women were particularly important in the establishment of early charitable, philanthropic and cultural institutions in our nation. And whereas American women of every race, class and ethnic background served as early leaders in the forefront of every major progressive social change movement. And whereas American women have served our country courageously in the military, and whereas American women have been leaders, not only in securing their own rights of suffrage and equal opportunity, but in the abolishment movement, in the abolishment, in the abolishment movement, the emancipation movement, and the industrial labor movement, the civil rights movement, and other movements, especially the peace movement which create a more fair and just society for all. And whereas despite these contributions, the role of American women in history has been consistently overlooked and undervalued in the literature, teaching and study of American history. And whereas the national theme for Black History Month 2020, um, is that correct there? Whereas the national theme for Black History Month 2020 is the Black family representation, identity, and diversity, and now therefore be it proclaimed that the town of Dumfries celebrates and recognizes March 2021 as Women's History Month. All right. 
Next on our agenda is the approval of the March 2nd, 2021 minutes. Anybody have any questions or anything about the minutes? Okay, seeing that we welcome a motion to approve the Tuesday, March 2nd, 2021 minutes. Councilwoman DeVille, you had a question? I move that we accept the minutes from the prior previous meeting. Okay. Second. Second by Councilman Fields. Any further discussion? Okay. Seeing none. Uh, Councilman Fields? Yes. Councilwoman Miles? Aye. Councilman Brown? Aye. Councilwoman DeVille? Aye. Vice Mayor? Yes. And that's a yes for me. That motion carries uh, six zero. All right, next on the agenda is uh, our citizen comment time. Are there any citizens here uh, currently uh, looking to speak? Please raise your hand and we will acknowledge you. This time. Okay. I uh, will bring in Miss Ebony Lofton. State your uh, name and address for the record. Uh, Ms. Lisa, please note that Councilman Pete is here. Good evening, council members. Hope everybody can hear me. Okay. All right, thank you. Um, first, I wanted to, my name is Ebony Lofton. I'm at 17904 Milroy Drive in Dumfries. Um, first, I wanted to thank um, the town manager and specifically Ms. Rhea Nickerson for assisting our community um, in removing some unidentified trash bins that were located in our community. Um, by the way, I'm the uh, president of South Coles Cove HOA. So I'm kind of uh, commenting on behalf of the community. Um, they were very helpful in, in us getting those picked up. So thank you very much. Um, just as an update from what was previously mentioned before by me um, and help from uh, Councilman Pete, the project to repair the 15 plus damaged utility boxes in our community is still underway. Um, Verizon and other utility companies appear to have come out. Um, there have been, you know, like the spray paint markings of the utility boxes. And I think at least one box has been repaired, but there are several more, particularly ones that are basically open holes in the ground that serve a huge safety issue for us. Um, our association attorney did reach out to these registered agents of these utility companies, but we haven't heard back. So I just continue to request the town's uh, assistance in getting that, uh, that, that uh, repaired. And then lastly, I had emailed and communicated with town manager um, Rogers on um, some very large commercial industrial vehicles that are parked at the end of our cul-de-sac, at the end of Old Triangle Road next to our tot lot. Um, according to, if I'm not mistaken, the town ordinance prohibits any parking of those types of vehicles in a B2 district. Um, and they are definitely parking there overnight. Um, it takes away from parking of uh, our residents who don't park in the community. And then also it just really shouldn't be in the community. So we uh, I don't know if there could be someone to come out and look at night. I've threatened to go out at like two and four in the morning to take pictures to send to the town manager and I'll try to do that. But any assistance that the town could uh, provide for that would be much appreciated. Um, as always, I thank each of you for your service to our community. God bless. Thank you for your comments. Uh, is anybody else signed up uh, wanting to speak? Uh, doing this public comment time. Okay. Seeing none at this time, we will close out the uh, comment period and we'll move into uh, reports and presentation. First one would be a Boys and Girls Club update from uh, the branch director, Ms. Judy Moore. The floor is yours. Good evening, everyone. Um, count, um, Town Manager Keith, are you going to? Okay, there you go. So I do have a presentation. Um, and this is just a recap since I haven't 
seen you guys in a while of what we've what's been going at, on at the club since um, we opened up for school last year. Um, so next slide, please. So currently um, we have 34 members enrolled, averaging 19 members a day. Last fall um, in September when school started, we had 50 members enrolled and we offered free childcare for the community um, due to funding from the county. We had the members ranged in, in, in grades from first through 10th grade. And we broke them down into three groups according to their grades. Um, and then staff would assist them with getting online to, um, and to their Zoom meetings for school, turning in assignments, and just making sure that they were in classes when they needed to be in class and then offering assistance when they had questions about work they were doing. Um, we've been following all the CDC and Boys and Girls Club of Greater Washington guidelines for COVID-19 safety. Um, the kids are assigned to a group and they stay with that group and the same staff person throughout the day. They pretty much stay in one room. If they rotate out of that room, then it gets sanitized before anybody else goes into that room. Um, that means wiping down all the furniture and chairs and you know, doorknobs and all of that. We've been um, monitoring kids as they use the restroom and communicating um, by walkie-talkie with the upstairs and with you know, kids as they walk through the building to go to restrooms. Um, and then we also upgraded the Wi-Fi system adding more ports and more Wi-Fi hubs so that all of the kids would be able to get connected to their and participate in their classes. So here's just a picture of some of the kids set up working in their classes. You know, typically these are six foot tables. So the kids would sit at the ends of the tables and that would be their spot for the day. Um, and typically, and not just for the day, but that was their, everybody had the same spot that they, sat in each day as they came in. Um, we continued, you know, at the end of the day, everything got wiped down and sanitized. When the kids come in in the morning, let me backtrack. When anybody comes into the building, there's a temperature check. Um, we currently are only allowing um, the members in and staff and then vendors, if we're having work done in the building, parents are not allowed in the building. They drop their kids off. Um, in the front lobby and sign them the, in the, um, the sign in and sign out book there, but they don't come into the main part of the building. Um, some of the parents, we put together a, um, a survey that they can just do online before they even get to the club saying that, you know, their child has not been exposed. You're know, just asking the basic COVID questions. And then they turn that in, you know, through, the, um, through an email and it comes to our front desk staff so we can monitor all that. We did complete our gym renovation last fall. It was professionally cleaned, which took about three days. Um, it was painted and then we have a new gym floor. So it's a, um, it's a rubber floor. Um, so it's a whole lot better than the floor that we had there. Currently, we are still not offering any sports um, just because of you know, all the COVID restrictions, but the members that are at the club are thoroughly enjoying it. And then there's a couple pictures of the floor, of the, of the gym and the renovation. We have um, the divider that's hanging there that broke last fall and um, it will be being repaired either this week or next week. I've, contract to the vendor to come out and take care of that. So once that gets done, then the gym will be, um, and then we have new mats that we're gonna be putting up also. So we're just waiting for our facilities team to come and replace the mats that are currently up on the wall. And then it will be completely finished. Past programs, um, we did have two youth of the year candidates from the Heiser Club. One of them was named the ambassador of the, for the organization. What that means is she did, she was not named the youth of the year, but we always have two runner-ups. And so she was one of the runner-ups. 
The teens also took part in a virtual teen takeover. And these were discussions about current issues that our teens are facing. And there's a flyer um, sharing some of the um, topics that they discussed. But this was done virtually and it was teens participating from all of the clubs within the organization. Upcoming programs um, that we have starting this spring, we're um, offering <coughs> Passport to Manhood, <coughs> Girls on the Run, and then a virtual STEM program. These will all be run by volunteers um, and, they, and the Passport to Manhood will also be um, done virtually. The Girls on the Run that is done at the club, but it is done outside so we can have volunteers come in and help with that program. No volunteers at this point are allowed in the building. And then this is the flyer for the Girls on the Run program. We did this last fall and had about 10 girls participate. And then this is a sample of virtual programming that we have had going on um, throughout the organization. We started this last spring um, after the, um, we closed down due to the pandemic. This was one of the things that we did to offer just to stay in touch with our kids um, throughout the organization. And there was programs being run um, pretty much from nine to um, eight through 8 p.m. by different staff and volunteers, but it was all done virtually. And then we've continued to um, be a food distribution site. We get boxes, um, we're, um, we get 25 to 30 boxes a week of perishable and non-perishable foods that we then um, distribute to families within the club and then also families from the community come and pick up. And the, this is just the sample box. We also just received new computers. Um, these were, do, were um, we were able to get these through a do donation from Amazon. So we have nine new computers, um, two of them are in our teen room and then the other seven are set up in our um, um, tech room. Um, upcoming, our fundraiser that's coming up is our John Jenkins for the Kids Golf Tournament. This is at the end of May and we're still looking for golf teams and sponsors. This is the information if you're interested in either of those. And we hope some of you will join us. Um, spring camp is coming up at the end of the month. Um, our, the time for spring camp will be 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Those are our current hours, what we've been running um, throughout the whole pandemic. Um, the cost per child for spring camp is $100. Um, if they're not currently a member, then they, do, they will need to pay um, the membership fee. And then summer camp, of course, is also coming up. It will be the same hours. The cost is, um, I found out after I put together the presentation that they had dropped the cost, it will be $100 per child. We will um, currently, for this summer, we are not planning any field trips. Everything will be happening at the club, which is what we did last year also. Um, we're not able to transport kids because of the size of our buses. Um, and then not being able to social distance. Um, there is a commitment form that we're asking all of our parents to complete just for our planning purposes. And that's it. Thank you very much for all your support. All right, Councilwoman Miles, I see you had a question. I do. Thank you, Mayor. And Judy, thank you so much for coming out tonight and sharing this information with us. And I also want to thank you for the work that you've been doing with um, our youth and with our children um, during this trying time, especially. Um, I do have two questions for you. Have you had any um, COVID uh, exposures in the center during this time? And then also, the second part of that question would be, has the staff been able to get access to the vaccine as like educators have had access to the vaccine clinics and things of that nature? 
Yes. So we had one COVID outbreak this, um, it was January or February. I was out on medical leave, so I can't give you the exact date, but I do know that we had one um, and it was, um, we had a staff person who was exposed outside of the club. And so he notified us that he had been exposed. He went and got tested, was quarantined. Um, and then there was also one child who we found out who um, did test positive. And so then that whole group had to go and be tested and um, before they could come back to the club. And the same with the staff person, even though he was not, um, he did not have it. He had just been exposed. Anybody he had been contact, in contact with then had to go be tested um, before they could come back to work. The, and then as far as the vaccine, we do have access to it. And um, so some of the staff had signed up and start and already gotten their first shots. Some of them, and some of them have had their second shots. And then um, some of us are also still waiting to get our first shots. And I guess I, I have a follow-up question um, given that the first answer. What is the protocol if someone does test positive that's already been inside the center? Does the sh center shut down for any amount of time so that it can be deep cleaned or anything like that? So what happens is if, um, nobody who has like, well, I can't say that. So what we do is anybody who was in that pod of people, they are all required to be tested. And then that, and then the, um, we get the, the club is disinfected every night. And then we are also throughout the day going around and disinfecting. Um, and so the, um, but it gets a more thorough disinfectant cleaning, um, but and the I club is not that, entirely shut down. Yeah, I think to give them um, a better perspective, uh, Judy, is that they don't understand the pro, I'm on the safety committee on the board. And so what they have is all of the kids are in set groups and they can't, they can't leave that group. They can't socialize with other group, but it's a set group that each one of these kids and they all have their own particular section that they go to in the club. And so if one person in the group, then the whole group is no longer lost. So they don't shut down the entire club, but they isolate it. And the only moly reported incidents they had is the one she talked about. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Judy. I appreciate oh, it. Nope. Not a problem. Anybody else? All right. Hi. I have Thank a question. You. Okay. Vice Mayor. Thank you. Um, Judy, I was looking through what you just presented to us and I saw the information about the summer camp, but I didn't see the dates. Have the dates already been established or are they to be to, to be determined? So the dates are the Monday after school gets out, which I don't have it off the top of my head. And I do know that there's been some talk about extending the school year. So we're kind of, um, I know we have the dates. Let me pull it up on my calendar. Um, and I'm sorry that I omitted that. I should have included. No problem. While you're looking at that, the other thing, the cost, the, the cost per child, $150, is that for the whole summer program or is that per week? That's per week. And it's actually a hundred. It's, it's, we've dropped it to a hundred and it's a hundred per week per child. Okay. Um, and as I had said, we are not, doing field trips um, at this point, if we are told that we can do field trips, then those the field trip fees would need to be paid for by the parents. It would not be included in the summer camp fee. Thank you. So I believe, yeah, I don't have it on my calendar here. Um, I believe school gets out the 18th and then, or the week of that 14th, and then we would start camp the 21st. But I would June. need to look at the school of June and I would need to look at the school calendar. Okay, thank you. Oh, not a problem. 
All right, was there uh, any other questions? All right, Mr. P. Mr. Pete, you're on mute. How you doing there, Ms. Judy, this evening? Just want to say thank you for the things that you're doing in the community as I am not a part of any board or um, involved in the, um, the Boys and Girls Club that way, but I am for several years have been heavily involved uh, with the Boys and Girls Club. So I want to say thank you for some of the things that you've uh, brought to the table with the Boys and Girls Club. Um, also, um, one of the things I had in concern was uh, where are we at with uh, addressing the roofing uh, for the gym? Uh, last I went in there, there was uh, leaks in the roof and I just wanted to know where we at, where we at with the roof or are we looking into that at all? Being that we are entering the rain months per se. Um, and then we'll she so addressed the, uh, the summer camp that's down to a hundred uh, per child. And are we still um, offering um, uh, discounted fees for the citizens of the town or, or where are we at with that there? Um, also, as far as with the vaccinations, are, will, will the uh, Boys and Girls Club be one of the um, sites for children to get vaccinated or if you have any updated information on that of you if we can provide that also. And then also I wanna thank you for um, that STEM program that you guys have brought in there. Uh, that's been, I've been hearing this from some children. They, they pretty much like that program. Uh, all, and to also I add, to include the um, food that you guys give out on, what's that, the Mondays. Uh, I wanna say thank you for that because uh, in, even myself, I have been helping you guys uh, get that food out to the, um, some of the families that are in need that, um, I don't know, I don't know if they know how to reach out to the Boys and Girls Club or uh, what the route of discon disconnect may be there, but um, been actually packing and uh, getting some, some of those foods out. So I wanna say thank you on that. But yeah, if we can uh, see where we are with the, uh, the roof, if you can provide us some information on that, uh, please. So the, the gym roof does not have any leaks. The, the water issue with the gym was always through the walls. It was coming through the walls and that was corrected before we did the, um, the floor. So that has been corrected. Um, it, and then- and, and, we, and we got a full mold report and there was zero came back in the mold report. We did a oh, full perfect, report. Perfect. perfect. Okay. Um, as far as the food distribution, um, so we rely on Prince William um, Food Rescue for the food distribution. And they, I had an email from them um, last week saying that, that the budget would not allow them. Um, they weren't, ha and I guess they usually had seven buses of seven truckloads of food come but because of the March budget um, and, I, and the gas prices going up, they will only be getting six, six trucks for the rest of the month. Um, and so the, the number of boxes has declined. Um, and then also because of all the, the snow days, we are not getting the food on Mondays. It looks like it's coming Wednesdays now. Like I said, I've only been back at work for two weeks now. And it looks like it's coming Wednesdays. Um, typically it's there by noon. And then we do have families that call um, to, see, to ask if it's there. Um, and then you know, if it's there, then they come and get it. And then some of our families take some of it. Okay, perfect. Well, okay, one more question, uh, Ms. Judy. What is, um, with the food that is coming out on the, um, well, Mondays, which is now being transitioned to uh, Wednesdays, you say? Uh, yes. Is how is the turnout on that? Is uh, are we getting uh, a nice participation for uh, the pickup on that? Yeah, we typically um, are able to um, distribute all the boxes that we get. Okay. Okay. And, and some families, like I know, when you were coming, you would get some for some of your neighbors and pick it up and then distribute it. And we still right. have people that that do that where they'll come, but they'll 
take for themselves. And then they've got a neighbor who can't make it out and they'll get for them also. Okay. All right. Thank you much. That's all I have. Councilman, I don't think that uh, kids 17 and under are eligible for the vaccine right now. So they haven't, I don't think they've done any testing for that. We'll do that. No. It's under 16, Mayor. It's under, yeah, it's, under, it's under 16. That's correct. They are looking into the uh, six months to 16 right now. Okay. All right. Just wanted to make sure that we uh, got all of that. All right. Thank you, uh, Judy, for uh, coming out tonight. We appreciate your Okay. Uh, and report. one I did find out, last day of school is June 11th. So our first day of camp would be June 14th. 14. In the, golf, in the golf tournament, the John Higgins golf tournament is in September? No, it's in May, May 21st. Oh, oh it's in May. We moved it up. That's right. Yes. Coming up fast. So if yes. anybody want to help uh, with that, it's a it's one of the uh, premier fundraisers that the, uh, the club does in addition to the youth of the year. So, okay. Oh, well, sir, go ahead. One more question, Ms. Judy, before we get off. Uh, just okay. clarification for the citizen uh, and some information. Um, okay, we, right now we're during the pandemic. We're not doing anything uh, as far as outgoing activities. Uh, is there any projected window where we, where you guys may start uh, looking into doing some outside activities, or are we just uh, doormatted for right now? Right now, we're just doormatted. We're, um, I mean, it could be lifted at some point in the summer. But the issue is, you know, the six feet distancing to, you know, to make sure everyone's staying social distanced and our buses are only hold 14 passengers. So you can really only carry about three people on a bus to maintain that social distance. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. All right. Next on our agenda is the town manager's report. Uh, Mr. Rogers, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Um, my team and I remain grateful for the opportunity to serve this great town of Dumfries. Uh, so tonight we have a number of exciting items that uh, you'll hear from staff, from finance, uh, as well as community development on. Uh, so tonight I wanted to uh, take the opportunity to yield my time to the police chief uh, to give the community a update on the uh, recent spike in specific thefts from auto. Uh, chief? Good evening. Can you hear me? Hear me? Loud and clear. All right. So uh, real quick, the, the town um, over the past month has been hit a lot with the some catalytic converter thefts. Sure you guys are all, all aware. A lot of our um, car dealerships have been hit. Um, the, the building uh, right before Williamstown. We can no longer hear you. There's something just. Can you hear me? Yeah, but not so clear. We can hear you. Any better? And we can see you. Okay. So the uh, some of the businesses have been been hit recently. The car dealerships, uh, some of the uh, places where they store a lot of vehicles, that the tow tow lots have been hit. Um, and it's not only in the town. It's uh, Prince William has been hit hard. Stafford has been hit hard. Uh, Culpeper, Spotsylvania, and even out into the uh, the western part of the country, San Bernardino um, also got got hit. So it's a, it's a nationwide problem, not a town of Dumfries um, problem. So. Uh, we have extended our efforts at the PD to do some surveillance in these uh, these businesses that are reoccurring, uh, getting hit. Some of these victims have been hit multiple times, uh, so we are uh, we moving our efforts into surveillance, even doing some plain clothes, um, unmarked vehicles where we're sitting in these in these businesses to make sure that you know if they're if they're coming through there that we're aware of it. Uh, we do have a suspect vehicle in some of our thefts. That we we didn't get a um, good tag number for the vehicle. It looks like the tag the tag of the vehicle was altered um, during during that. We can't really get any suspect information. We can see some silhouettes, but not not really make out any any faces, races, genders, or anything like that. But we do see um, it's a, a white Chevy uh, Chevrolet pickup, single cab. So we've been monitoring um, traffic in and out of the town. 
we checked with the um, some LPRs that we have in the area, also with South South Cove. Um, they have a license plate reader down there that we've been we've been monitoring the traffic in and out of there to see if we can come up with this this vehicle. Um, so we have a lot of videos from this, uh, and we have I'm in contact with these businesses to uh, tell them what they do with lighting, um, maybe some trail cams um, that they can get that cost effective that they can put up and assist us in, in capturing uh, the suspects of this. I'm in contact with the Prince William officer that's investigating in Prince William. We're sharing information with them. Also, uh, today I reached out to Stafford County. They had some sp suspects that um, kind of matched our MO of what we're doing. So uh, we're probably going to do an interview at the, at the regional jail here probably within the next few days to, to speak to those uh, two gentlemen. Um, Culpepper also had um, some suspects get caught, and we reached out to the Culpepper detectives to to get some information on there. So just want to make you guys aware, make the community aware we are on top of it. We're, we're all of our efforts at, at night are into these businesses and making sure this doesn't happen. And it's not anywhere in particular in the town, it's all over the town. So just be aware of what we've kind of preached to people is try to park under well-lit areas um, close to close to buildings. It's hard to see if your car has been stolen until, until the catalytic converter has been stolen until you turn it on and then you'll be able to hear uh, a difference in your exhaust system. And then once you, once you hear it, if you look under your car, you'll see um, in between the parts of the exhaust where the, uh, the Cadillac converter um, is, is missing. And basically what they're doing is they're taking the Cadillac converters, they're taking them to scrap yards and they're getting about 750 to $800 per, per Cadillac converter. So if you get 10 to 20 a night, you're making some, some pretty good money. So, uh, and it's really going up and down 95. A lot of these people are just jumping off the exits on 95 hitting five, you know, five cars here and then continuing north or south and continuing that, that activity. So if you guys have any questions for me, I'll, I'll be glad to take any questions that you have. Um, what, what can, I guess, some of the people do in, in some of the neighborhoods? I know a lot of the cars on, on Tebs have got hit and Tebs doesn't, doesn't have any well-lit um, streets yet. I know we, we got it in, in the thing, but like, yeah, how we, can, what, what can they do to prevent I guess their cars get a hit. Uh, I, I know a lot of some people park on the park on the street. If you can park closer to your house, that's we recommend that. Um, also, if you see anything suspicious, even if you're just driving through there, if a, if a car doesn't match what you usually see in that neighborhood, call us. It could be nothing, but it could be something. So it's all I always tell people. I re, it's safe than sorry. So call us. We'll rather check it out than than deal with it later later on. Um, start your cars. Um, like I said, if you see if you see something, say something. Tell us about it. If you see something on a ring cam, or something like that, um, you know, like I said, I'll give you the description of the vehicle that we have. I'll pass that out to everybody. We don't have a tag number, just a white Chevy pickup single cab, about a 2004 model. It looks like uh, two suspects in it. Don't know un unknown race, um, unknown unknown gender, but basically they're in and out. Basically, it's a minute. You know, you can be un under the car. And, uh, if you see somebody carrying a, um, a Sawzall, that's usually what they use. Some will use a handsaw, but it's quicker with the Sawzall. So if you see somebody carrying around a large object, you see some people walking through the neighborhoods late at night, from the videos that we've seen, it's usually occurring between 2 and 4, 4 a.m. I would say 2, two to 5 a.m. That's when, when we're getting, getting hit. So if you see anything between that time, you think it's suspicious, call us, and we'll, you know, we'll make sure we're checking it out. Yeah, and... Just so everybody know, I too have lost my Cadillac convert on my truck. I haven't replaced it because I don't feel like uh, keep replacing it over and over because they keep stolen. So right now I don't have a Cadillac convert on my big truck. Yeah, it's so a couple thousand think. dollars to replace it. And yeah, I'm not going to replace it until uh, it's time. So I've been hit. I know over in the Dumfries Shopping Center, talking to those landscape guys, they've been hit. Some of the other... Um, uh, uh, people have been hit and some of the business owners have, have told me they were going to take matters into their own hands and I, I, I didn't recommend that to them. I told them I spoke to the same yeah. business owners and told them to please let, let us please Oh, let they us told us. you the same thing? Yeah, they, <laughs> they was going to take matters into their own hand and I just told them be patient that, that it's, it's happening all over. So uh, Council, any questions on the town manager report or with the chief? Okay, Councilwoman DeVille. Yes, I don't have any questions, but I'm always proud of the uh, interim chief's work and I just wanted to thank him. It's refreshing to have him uh, come and share this update with our citizens tonight. So I'm glad to see that this is a uh, very positive um, despite the circumstances. So thank you for giving the people this update that they need. 
Oh, no problem. Thank you. Keep up the great work. Thank you. Well, town manager, did you want to say anything about the, uh, you know, the Route 1 widening project? Anything exciting happening there? Well, where we're at there? It was in your report, so I figure you have opportunity. Sure. Uh, I think I didn't want to, I don't want to jump in front of Councilman Brown. I think he had his hand up. Okay. Oh, I see him now. Go ahead, Councilman Brown. So this is for Chief. So have there been any citizens that are bringing any kind of uh, tips, anything to you at this point? from ring, ring cameras or anything like that? Uh, some of the businesses have brought us some video footage. Uh, there was two businesses on the, at Williamstown Drive across from Grace Church that had, they had video cameras, they had an LPR camera, uh, as well as from the front and the back. So it was weird, the, first, the night that they got hit, the, first, the front part of the building had one vehicle get hit. And as I was reviewing it for the, the weekend, about an hour and a half later, the same suspects came back, went around back, and hit two vehicles back there. It's the exact same truck, and we're just unable to get a tag um, on the truck. It's I ran multiple ways. We got a partial tag, but we've ran it multiple ways through multiple states, and we can't get the tag to return. And even if you do get that tag to return, it doesn't mean it's to that vehicle. But you know, we're trying our best with what we do have. But that's the only footage that we have is from that that business is the business is right there, Williamstown, across from Grace Church. So, Mr. Rogers, is there a way that we can solicit information for these incidents on the website so citizens that know, can know that they can uh, submit any tips to, to the chief? Yes, sir. Um, PD already has a, um, a way to accept uh, tips. What we will do, chief, is we will promote that on our main website um, and make it uh, specific to this this current incident so we can try to get this resolved. Uh, that's a great uh, idea, Councilman, thank you. That's all I have. Rogers? Yes, sir. Route one. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, thank you. Thank you, Chief. Uh, I appreciate you uh, that effort tonight. Um, Moving on to Route One, uh, first I want to uh, just reiterate what a what a major accomplishment it was for the town to be uh, awarded the funding for the project. So I want to uh, thank uh, MVTA and their staff. Um, I also want to thank uh, our public work staff for their uh, hard work in submitting the applications and and get in pursuing the funding. Um, and we are looking forward to working with Prince William County, who will help us with our implementation. Um, you all will recall that the county, um, they finalized uh, or got their approval to execute our MOU uh, between the town and the county to implement that project. And so we're excited. We're working right now to provide a, or to put together a implementation timeline uh, that we can share with the public that uh, will provide a comprehensive update. So uh, we look forward to bringing that back to council and to the public as soon as it's ready. That is exciting, Ben, that it's been one of those long range projects that we've, we're, we've been working on. So I'm excited to hear. And I think MBTA had it on the agenda last Thursday and they kind of moved the funding forward. So we're, we're excited and uh, absolutely grateful for that. So any other questions on the town manager report council before we uh, move on? Okay, seeing none, next on our agenda is the third quarter financial presentation and we'll welcome uh, uh, Ms. Kimberly Godwin. The floor is yours. Thank you everyone and good evening. Um, for the third quarter review, we are continuing to monitor the impact of the pandemic. Local sales, local tax collection is up to date as of February. Current trends of the increase of revenue and categories is real estate is up 16%. Sales tax is up 57%. Business license revenue is strong with the improvement of uh, collection procedures. And for what we're currently watching right now, since Rosie just recently opened up in January, we're watching the gaming tax. Expenditures are on par for all departments. And a future lookout is additional pandemic relief funding. And um, last but not least, and the most important, is to build best practice in budgeting and financial operations. Any questions? 
regarding the third quarter review. And also um, if anyone has any questions regarding the fiscal year 2020 audit, the auditors are in the audience. Yeah, I saw the vice mayor's hand go up first. Yes, Thank you, Ms. Godwin. Um, with regard to the current trends showing increases in key revenue categories, please um, confirm that does not mean an increase in the actual taxes that will be levied upon no. our citizens. No, 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 not increase in the actual tax rate. It's just increase in receiving Collections. funds. Receiving the payment. Thank yeah. you for that clarification. Yes, yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, were there any other questions? Um, I, I guess I had questions, but it was more on the, where we at, and I don't know if the town manager can help us out. Can you give us a, I guess a third quarter update on the different capital improvement plan projects that we have, or uh, if we're gonna move forward this year or, or which ones we had um, set aside for, for the uh, FY21? As well. Yes, sir. Um, so all of the projects that we currently have uh, for 21, uh, we are working to bring those to completion uh, by the end of, by June 30th. Um, so before when I provide a fourth quarter report or when Ms. Goodwin provides a fourth quarter report, um, if not sooner, we will provide an update on all of those capital improvement projects. Uh, one note uh, on capital improvement projects, um, the funding that was allocated for FY21, it rolls over if not spent. So we're not under the same constraints of it rolling to the fund balance like we are in the general so a, uh, a project doesn't have to be, uh, just to give an example, a road doesn't have to be paved by June 30th for us to be able to continue to do it uh, if it's a capital project. So we'll have an update on all those projects uh, with the fourth quarter report. I think some of like the Williamstown Complete Street Program, we've already kind of completed that one out, right? No, sir. No, oh, so we, okay. All right. None of those. All right. So I was just trying to see where we go, but we, because those are like pay go programs or we already have the money in there, or are you saying they would have been transferred in? I understand yes, from the budget. The money is there. Okay. All right. Yeah, that was my question. It was just on the capital improvements. All right. Anybody else have any other questions for uh, the mid-year budget review or uh, for the auditors uh, on the CAFR this year? Are there any questions? Okay. Uh, thank you all. Well, thank you, Ms. Godwin, for uh, your work and uh, your collections and, and how we're doing. Uh, I look forward to seeing uh, how much we get from the Recovery Act here probably in the next couple of weeks, although I think I already know the number. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, pretty significant. So. But we only get half up front and then we get half a year later. So uh, I think the projections are over $5 million for the town of Dumfries. Correct. So, all right. Uh, thank you, gentlemen, for uh, coming today. Uh, um, so, uh, Andrew and Nick, thank you. Oh, no, Nick is, is about to do our planning. <laughs> all right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So, next uh, on our agenda is our action items. And our first action item is an ordinance uh, to adopt um, resolution RZ 2020-002 for the first town center, but we're gonna continue that to the April 20th meeting. Uh, so we'll move on to be a resolution commending special education teachers. Uh, Councilwoman Miles, the floor is yours on that one. Thank you, Mayor. So I introduced this resolution because we've all had to make adjustments during this pandemic. And on the front line of those changes and making adjustments were our teachers. And the front line of that will be our special education teachers. And they have had to find ways that are innovative to ensure that our children in special education with intellectual disabilities do not get left behind. We have welcomed new students and not new students, but we welcome our students back into the classroom this month in Prince William County, but special education students have been in, in the building since September. 
And in addition to having students in the building, our special ed teachers have also had to maintain a virtual education setting that was captivating enough to make sure that education, that our children were still being educated. And personally, I've had a front row seat be the hard work and dedication of our special education teachers at Forest Park High School. And I believe that we are very fortunate in the town of Dumfries that Forest Park is our high school for our students. The teachers in the H Street Bruins, as they're affectionately called, they work as a team to ensure that they educate our kids. They have virtual field trips. They have all uh, kinds of technology that they have purchased through um, the administration to ensure that they can reach our children and that they get it at home to ensure that these kids can be educated. So without further ado, I'd like to read the resolution to um, commending our special education teachers at Forest Park High School. Whereas strong and effective public schools are essential to economic prosperity and ensure that we continue to make social technolo technological and scientific advancement, and whereas qualified, dedicated teachers are critical to the success of our students, and whereas through their dedicated efforts, our teachers ensure that students are prepared for higher education and the workforce. And whereas the United States, one of seven school-age children have one or more developmental disabilities. And whereas the COVID-19 pandemic has challenged teachers to adapt to unprecedented circumstances to educate students both inside and outside of the classroom. And whereas special education requires a unique commitment for teachers, students, and families. And whereas the teaching profession benefits from educators who are empowered to lead, allowing them to best prepare our youth to be contributing members of our community. And whereas we celebrate local leaders in special education, particularly at Forest Park High School. Now, therefore be it resolved, the town, of, the town council for the town of Dumfries hereby recognizes and commends Forest Park High School special education teachers for their dedication and commitment to educating our youth. And I'd like to make a motion to approve, Mr. Mayor. I'll second it. Yeah. All right. Any uh, any discussion? All right. Well, I think this will be a resounding. I, I think I can uh, safely do this. All in favor, if you could turn your mics on uh, and just say aye. 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 And Mayor, I would like to also point out that Mr. Martinez, who's the principal of Forest Park High School, is here today. And I don't want to put him on the spot, but if he had to say a few words. Nope, nope, Mr. Problem. Martinez, the floor is yours to accept this resolution. Well, thank you very much, uh, Mayor Wood and Vice Mayor Nickerson. Uh, Councilman Miles, nice seeing you. It's been a while. Um, and uh, other distinguished members of the council. Um, I am here and uh, Dr. Waltz was uh, planning to attend, but he sent me a text that he was held up in another meeting, as was our associate superintendent for special education and student services, uh, Mrs. Hebner. She's currently with the superintendent's uh, advisory council for special education uh, in a meeting tonight. Uh, so we, are, we really appreciate the recognition. Um, I, uh, when this all began, I was actually on a recruiting trip in Puerto Rico and I almost wasn't able to get off the island exactly about <laughs> wow. a year ago. Um, I'm, uh, my family is from Puerto Rico, so it was my surprise when I went to the airport and I saw it as empty as it was. And I'm like saying, this is not good. Uh, but basically, uh, upon arriving back, uh, everything was shut down. We cleaned everything, basically prepared to receive students on March I think it was supposed to be 16th, a Tuesday. Uh, I had custodial workers in there. And on Sunday, we got the call that everything was shut down. Um, and despite that, we continued working, in particular for our special education students. Um, our, th these students, uh, a lot of them have medical issues. They have medications at school. So despite everything being shut down, I, 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 my, I found myself, as well as other administrators and some special educators, the nurses, showing up at the building twice a week sometimes just to address the needs of our families, especially our special education students who needed their medications or special equipment that they weren't going to be able to have access for. And then we've continued to working and our special educators have done an outstanding job. Uh, they've been there since September 8th, roughly, uh, every day uh, with no vaccine, 
working with our students with the mitigations that we have developed and utilizing new resources, new technologies, uh, inspiring students in ways that, that they maybe have never attempted before. And, and we've been successful. Um, you know, we are at a point where we have some students in the building and obviously we have a larger percentage uh, in, in, uh, on a virtual environment, but we are in a better place. Uh, we've improved our technologies. Uh, uh, teachers have become more familiar with it. They're, they're, they're utilizing them. And at the same time, uh, I, I was listening to the question about vaccine, vaccines and with the help of the Department of Health, uh, mostly by the end of this week, most of the teachers will have had the opportunity to have received their first and second dose of, of uh, of uh, the vaccination, be it Pfizer or the Moderna. So uh, from a staffing perspective, you know, at least we have the teachers protected and now we're waiting to see what happens with the student, uh, with the uh, under 16 vaccine, uh, which is uh, being tested at this time. So we're hoping as we keep moving forward that we're in a much better shape, but this is not about that. This is about recognizing these outstanding educators. I believe some of them were, were, were there. I, I did text uh, Mrs. Hebner. She said that if she can sneak out of her meeting and jump on, she will. Uh, so I don't know if there's someone else uh, or if Dr. Waltz was able to sneak out, but we really rec uh, appreciate the recognition. And it's not just about us at Forest Park High School. There are thousands of special educators out there and, and teaching assistants as well who have been in the building four days a week with students who are coming in four days a week. These are what we call our vulnerable students. And uh, we're going to do what we need uh, when we get to some sense of normal to be able to put them back on track and, and address what they call that COVID bubble that it's going, we can't determine right now. It's when we get back uh, into the building, working day in and day out with, these, with our students uh, to help them um, forge ahead and, and prepare them to have those uh, community-based activities so that they have employability skills, because that's what many of them are seeking as, as they move forward and, and they age out of our program. So again, thank you on behalf of Prince William County Schools, Dr. Waltz, Mrs. Hebner, our staff, uh, Dr. Maloney, who's our special education administrator, Ms. Back, who's our special education department chair, as well as teachers, uh, as Ms. Cohen, uh, who uh, I, I believe Ms. Ms. Miles knows firsthand, and Ms. Carranza, Ms. Tayon, Ms. Lake. Uh, oh, Jay, I'm going to leave names out here trying to recall. Mr. Ott, who's a, a first year teacher, and this is his experience, you know, a first year teacher, and this has been his experience working in this, in, in this atmosphere. But they've done a fabulous job, and if you've had uh, the opportunity to see some of their exchanges, uh, it's been great seeing what they've been able to accomplish with the students. Thank you very much. Thank you for, uh, Mr. Martina, give our regards to all the special education teachers, especially all the teachers that's working hard over there at Forest Park during this uh, uh, pandemic to be able to overcome and adapt with continued enthusiasm. All right, Councilwoman Miles, any last words? Uh, yes, I'm just going to take my councilwoman hat off right now and put my mom hat on. <laughs> <laughs> say I uh, words cannot express how thankful I am to the program that you've put together over at Forest Park you and Dr. Maloney have just done an outstanding job and you you mentioned all my son's teachers so <laughs> you didn't leave anybody out. I do um, want to say also the teachers that support the special education program uh, teachers like Mr. P um, Ms. McCann um, that they have mastered the art of working with our kids and when we talk about Prince William County providing our students a world-class education, that really, I can attest that that takes place at Forest Park. And we are truly fortunate that you, that our children in the town of Dumfries have the, have the privilege of attending your school system. So I do thank you. And, and here to serve and uh, trying to live up to the motto of expect excellence at Forest Park. That's what, what the Latin uh, inscriptions means, you know? So uh, that's, that's what we're here for and we're looking forward. And uh, I'm looking forward for our special education kids. We are one of the first ones to work with the uh, unified sports, with the unified sports program. And typically they would be doing the basketball at this time, but we can't. But now we have a new field. It's awesome. It looks great. So we're really looking forward to seeing when the kids have the opportunity to be out there and participate. And we're able to host the track meets and, and some other events as a result of having the updated stadium as well. Okay. All right, thank you, sir. Next on our agenda, let me just check with council. Do y'all need a five minute break or y'all good to press on?
right? Yeah, say y'all need five minutes or you press on. Look, I'm looking for a consensus here. Y'all all right? All right, so we'll, we'll move on to the next one. Is it ordinance to approve zoning text amendment 2021-003 to amend chapter 70, section 70, the identification is 70-14 signs to permit the use of electronic signs for public use on public property. Mr. Capers, the floor is yours. Uh, good evening, Mr. Mayor. Um, for this um, agenda item, we will have Nick uh, Cicero present. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Vice Mayor, and members of the Town Council. My name is Nick Cicero, and I'm the planner for the Department of Planning and Community Development for the Town of Dumfries. This evening, staff will present a staff report for the Town of Dumfries Town Council to amend Chapter 70-1, the definition section, and 70-14, the science section of the Town Zoning Code. On February 16th, 2021, the Town of Dumfries Town Council adopted a resolution to initiate zoning text amendments to Chapter 70, Section 70-1, definitions, and 70-14 signs of the Town Zoning Code. The proposed zoning text amendments, if approved, will add the definition of electronic display sign to Section 70-1, as well as amend Section 70 Dash 14 to permit electronic signs for the public use on public property. Next slide, please. The proposed zoning text amendment proposes to add the definition of electronic display signs as follows. Any sign that contains light emitting diodes, fiber optics, light bulbs, plasma, plasma display screens, or other illumination methods that can change its content and or the intensity of light or colors displayed by way of electronic or mechanical means. Next slide, please. The design standards and regulations for, for electronic display signs are intended to regulate the size, brightness, and operation of the display screen on the sign to ensure that information is is displayed in a safe and clear manner. Next slide, please. These proposed amendments are consistent with the Town of Dumfries Comprehensive Plan and Community Services and Facilities Goal, which is encouraging promotion of a coordinated system of community facilities and services to maintain and enhance the quality of life in the town. Next slide, please. As of such, staff recommends that the Town of Dumfries Town Council approves the, the proposed zoning text amendments to section 70-1 definitions and section 70-14 signs of the town zoning code. On its regularly scheduled meeting on March 8th, 2021, the town of Dumfries Planning Commission recommended that the town council approves the proposed zoning text amendments to section 70-1 definitions and section 70-14 signs of the town's zoning code. This completes my presentation. I'm joined by the Director of Planning and Community Development, Will Capers. We are happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you. All right, before I ask questions, Council Vice Mayor, I see your hand. Thank you, Nick, for that presentation. I have two questions. Um, so the first question I have is, Based on what I'm hearing, does that mean now that Dumfries Elementary will be permitted to put their sign outside of their school? This is something that they've been looking forward to trying to do for a couple of years. So please um, confirm that. The second thing is I heard you say for public property, does that mean a private business owner is not able to use signage that would be comparable to what's now being authorized for public use such as a school? Uh, yes, good evening, Ms. Uh, Vice Mayor. Um, I guess I could answer your, uh, both questions by reinstating what Mr. Saraso provided in the staff report that this use to operate electric sign will be permitted only for public organizations on public property. 
So again, um, to answer your first question, this allows any public organization to include Prince William County Public Schools to permit the electronic signs on a school property. And um, you are correct, this is only for public organizations and for public use, not for private entities. Okay, thank you. Was there any other questions? I think mine was similar. So looking at the presentation we got from a Colonial Downs on the Rose, it looked like their big signage they had posted in 95 was uh, proposed to be a digital sign. So there will be no language in the ordinance to allow for that type of signage? Uh, Mr. Mayor, you are correct. Um, as the zoning text amendment as presented only provides electronic messaging signs for public properties. Um, again, the presentation that was provided by the roads were just renderings um, that I assume was to roll out the project as a presentation. Those signs and considerations are in part of the rezoning case. But um, to answer your question, a part of this zoning text amendment is just to allow electronic messaging signs for public organizations. So what if we wanted to advertise for public and private? The council has the, the authority to amend and to change the zoning ordinance as they see as they see pleasure. I will say in the event that um, the council would like for us to uh, evaluate electronic messaging signs for private properties, we will have to take this back and do an, an, uh, an additional evaluation to see if, if there's something that we could permit and if it conforms with our comprehensive plan. Ms. Pendek, I see your mic off. You wanted to add to the conversation? Um, yes, Mr. Mayor, I, I, would, I would echo what Mr. Capers has said. As I understood this in its genesis, it was to specifically uh, allow for, um, for schools to have an electronic sign. But in some ways, this is a trial project. Uh, and, and so, we assisted the planning office in drafting it from the uh, context of, of what would be a, a appropriate signs on public buildings. Again, as Mr. Caper says, if the council wants to consider something that would extend to private um, buildings, then um, you could initiate separate amendments, but this is ready for your approval tonight. Uh, it is not in a form where I think it's appropriate to simply tack on and private buildings, in case that was the next question. So we would have to do a, a, a separate, have a separate process started for- That's correct. Okay. Yes, sir. All right, council, any other uh, questions on what we have before us right now? That's Woman DeVille, I see your mic question, off. Question, Mayor. Um, can we clarify the date, what I'm seeing, if I'm looking at the right document, it's at the bottom, it says on March 16th, 2021. Is that date correct? That's when we advertised last month. Last month. So it oh, no, be that's today. That's today. March 16th is today. Sorry. Um, to, for, for a point of clarity, um, Councilwoman Neville, are you referring to when the council will vote on this, on this amendment? That will be today, the 16th. Right, I'm aware of that. So I want to make sure it looks like um, from this document, I want to make sure I have the right one. So I may not have the right document in front of me, but from the one I'm looking at in my packet, it's showing um, March 16th for that last line at advertisement. But I, I just want to make sure if you can look at that and see if it should say February 16th. Um, Mr. Mayor, if I might. Yes. I, I think, um, Councilwoman Neville, it says on March 16th, the town council conducted a duly advertised and noticed public hearing, which I presume the mayor will open this matter up for a public hearing once questions have been answered by staff. So, okay, so that would be, okay, so that clarifies. Thank you. Any other uh, questions before we go to the public hearing? All right, seeing none, um, if there's anybody sitting in the audience that uh, wants to speak to this uh, ordinance for electronic signs for public property and public community, uh, 
raise your hand now and we will uh, bring you in to speak to it. Okay. Seeing none at this time, I will close the public hearing portion. Uh, council, was there any uh, further questions before uh, we welcome a motion? Councilman Brown. So, so I don't, I don't have a question. I have more of a comment, and okay. that is, uh, being that we are just uh, changing this for public use, uh, and I don't know what was driving the the change, uh, who drove it, uh, but I can see that business owners would want to come back and do this shortly after they see signs go up. So I'm not about changing every so often or so, so many times when we can kind of get this thing done at one time. So in the future, moving forward, if we don't have any pressing uh, uh, um, uh, uh, citizens pushing the, the amendment, if it's not something that's outside of the state, then we, we have time to, to adjust. So I don't I like to rush through this because it's here. Uh, I think it could have been thought out a little bit more if we had enough information about what was going on. So that's just a comment I have. So not it's going to stop the vote tonight, anything like that. Councilman Pete, did you have something? I think I missed your hand. Oh, uh, just one of this, um, you know, I've been, this is one of the things that I've been rallying for is to uh, not sort of like Vegas, but the flash don't freeze up and, it's a part of the uh, model of uh, driving to Dumfries and not through Dumfries. So I'm excited to see if we can uh, get this language done for both public and um, private to uh, have these uh, signages uh, lighten up in our town. Yeah, so Mr. Brown, it, it was Dumfries Elementary has a sign that they're, um, they've been wanting to put up and we just didn't have an ordinance for it. So that was the, the spirit behind it, as Ms. Pandak said, Dumfries Elementary kind of getting there signed up. But I, I guess you're you're right in thinking it through for both the, the public and the business aspect when we put it in. I didn't know it was gonna be a very specific language until I, I saw the draft that came before. So uh, that is a, a duly good point. And I think we will definitely look at that in consideration uh, moving forward. Mayor, if I may, um, you're absolutely correct. Um, there, this, this was a in response to a specific request for Dumfries Elementary School. Uh, I will yield to Miss uh, Pandek and Mr. Capers, but I just wanted to see um, if it's the pleasure of council uh, tonight to get a consensus for us to begin the process to initiate or look at this for uh, the private uh, private entities as well. Uh, so we can take that direction from the council to begin that process. Um, yeah, I check real good. Councilman Fields, do you, do you want the do you want the the staff to go back and initiate something for the private? Just yes or no. We're just trying to see a consensus here. Can, can you hear me? Is my mic working? Yeah, I can hear you. No, let's continue on with this. and then we'll come No, back. so he's just asking, we're going to continue on, but should they go back and work on another one? Oh, yes. yes. Okay. Councilwoman Neville? I agree. Okay. Councilman Brown? Yes. Okay, Councilman Pete? Absolutely. Councilwoman Miles? Yes. I think that's the majority there. Vice Mayor, I just. Um, yes, I do think it's a good idea to go back and look at it. I would like for staff to give very careful consideration to what that looks like, because I, for one, would not like to see Vegas in Dumfries. <laughs> Thank you. Right. And, and, I, and I'll say yes to that consensus, too. All right. Back to the ordinance at hand, seeing that there, we've exhausted the discussion on this one. Uh, we welcome a motion to approve the ordinance to approve zoning text amendment 2021-003 uh, to amend chapter 70, section 70-1 and section 70-14 for signs to permit the use of electronic signs for public use on public property. So moved. 
Okay, it's been second. moved by Councilman Phil, second by second. Council, Councilwoman DeVille. Uh, seeing no more discussion, I will call for the question. All right, Councilman Brown. Yes. Councilman Phils. Yes. Councilwoman Miles. Aye. Councilwoman DeVille. Aye. Councilman Pete. Yes, let's do Vice it. Vice Mayor. Yes. That's a yes for me. The motion carries uh, seven to zero. All right. Congratulations on that. Next on um, our, yes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to interrupt. I thought I saw Mr. Capers hand up earlier before we started doing the voting. Did, did you have a, a, a hand before we took the vote, Mr. Capers? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. Are you are you good? Are we going to move to the next one or you got something on this one? It, it was uh, in regards to the last vote, but I. Okay. All right. All right. So next on the agenda is the uh, is the ordinance for zoning text amendment 2021 to amend chapter seven, article four, site plan of the town code. Mr. Capers, the floor is yours. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Vice Mayor, members of the Town Council. My name is Will Capers, and I am the Planning Director of the Department of Planning and Community Development for the Town of Dumfries. This evening, staff will present a staff report for the Town of Dumfries Town Council to consider amendments to Chapter 70, Article 4 of the Town Zoning Code. On February 16th, 2021, the Town Council adopted a resolution to initiate zoning text amendments to Chapter 70, Article 4 of the Town Zoning Code. The proposed zoning text amendments, if approved, will designate the Director of Planning and Community Development the authority to review and approve site plans as the agent for Town Council. It will establish requirements for the waiver of site plan provisions by the Director of Planning and Community Development. And lastly, it will make minor editing amendments to Article 4 of the Zoning Code. Part, the proposed amendments to Chapter 70, Article 4, will bring the Town of Dumfries into compliance with the state law on major provisions as it pertains to the review and approval of site plan applications. The Code of Virginia 15.2-2286A7 indicates that the governing body of a locality shall designate an agent for review and approval of site plan applications. The intent of the code is to allow for the administrative approval of site plan applications to ensure that an applicant's request for land development complies with regulatory guidelines set forth by local and state agencies. Currently, Chapter 70, Article 4 of the Town of Dumfries Zoning Code designates the Town Council as the final proven agent for site plan application. The designation of the Town Council as the agent for site plan approval does not comply with the Code of Virginia and in part presumes that the review and approval of site plan application is a legislative process where discretionary review of applications are considered rather than a process of evaluation for compliance. Proposed amendments to designate an agent for the review and approval of site plan applications will comply with state regulations. It will also streamline the process of how site plans are accepted, reviewed, and approved. The proposed amendments will also enhance service delivery through the efficient processing of site plan applications. Further, to ensure compliance and efficiency in the review of site plan applications, the proposed zoning text amendments also establishes the standards for the waiver of site plan requirements by the Director of Planning and Community Development. Finally, the proposed amendments to Chapter 70, Article 4 of the Town Code incorporates minor editing amendments to clean up several grammatical and inconsistent text references that are provided in the current site plan regulations. The intent of these minor editing amendments is to provide consistency, clarity, and effective processing of site plan and review and approval. Staff recommends that the Town of Dumfries Town Council approve the proposed zoning text amendments to Chapter 70, Article 4 of the Town Zoning Code on its regular scheduled meeting on March 8, 2021. The Town of Dumfries Planning Commission recommended that the Town Council approves the proposed zoning text amendments to Chapter 70, Article 4 of the Town Zoning Code. So please my presentation and I'm available to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Okay, I see you, Councilwoman Miles. I see your hand. <laughs> I just want to say that I see it. Gotcha. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Um, I have a question for Mr. Capers and possibly Ms. Pandek can weigh in on this. All right, so you say that we are currently not in compliance with uh, state code. 
Um, and I understand that it might not be best practice for the legislative body to make these decisions, but could you explain to me uh, to help me understand how we are not in compliance as it relates to the law? Uh, yes, Councilman Miles. Again, the, the state requirements um, requires a site plan approvals and review are done through a more of an administration process where there's a check on the compliance um, of zoning code and any other uh, zoning action that were taken on a particular property. The way that the current code establishes uh, site plan review and approval is more or less of a legislative process, as you may be familiar with, with rezoning applications, where the council could apply a discretionary review uh, and approval in a decision of, of the site plan approvals. It's not a check off list or to see if it's compliance. Uh, it opened up the door for, um, you know, possible, sorry, um, it's more than just a compliance or, or checkoff process. It's, it's being scrutinized more as a legislative process where it's approved, uh, not based on the merit of the application, not on its compliance with current zones or statutes. Ms. Bender? Yes, Mr. Mayor, I, I, I think I would say what Mr. Caper said in slightly a different way. Um, the, the Dumfries Code is not illegal in placing um, approval of the site plan in the town council, uh, but it is uh, confusing in terms of roles. Uh, it is uh, inconsistent in the sense that the state code refers to the town council designating um, a, an entity to do this. And I think Mr. Capers referred to that. Uh, but, but the town council could continue to do um, the review role and approval of site plans. The, the challenge I think that you all have as council members, and part of it is a perception challenge, part of it is um, it comes with being a governing body member used to making legislative decisions, is that the site plan process under Virginia law is a checkoff type process, which is the applicant needs to show that they meet the various count, the various code requirements, uh, any regulation requirements, uh, and that's it. Uh, no more than that, and no less than that. And yet, if it, with the matter being one that's left to council, or council choosing to be its own review entity, the expectation, I think, of you all as council, maybe of yourselves, maybe by your constituents, is that you will look at these projects or these plans and determine whether or not you like them or whether or not they're good for the council or for the town. And that's not, that's not the essence of where matters are at the site plan uh, uh, stage. Um, and our fear is that, in a, my fear, maybe not Mr. Capers, but in addition to, to, to that role that makes you more likely to be the subject of litigation if an applicant for a site plan um, doesn't think that you are simply doing the checkoff uh, process. And it being a checkoff process, the entity or the, the people who are most familiar right off with whether or not all the aspects of the town regulations on planning uh, to the extent that there's some public works requirements are at the staff level. Um, so right now, in effect, as being the, um, the approval entity, the council really is in, an, and I hate to use this term, but from a legal standpoint, since this is only an administrative process, you are simply providing a rubber stamp to that which has already been um, reviewed from a staff standpoint. And then even the planning commission is sort of in um, the same role as the council in this regard. 
That's not to say that, that you all are unimportant. Uh, it's just to say that your legislative role is not what is to be brought to the approval of the site plans. Okay, thank you. I just wanted to clear that up because when you use words like you are not comp in compliant with the state code, that translates to you're doing something illegal. So I just wanted to clarify the verbiage. So thank you for that. Yeah, I'm you're, allowed. You're, you're not illegal. I do want to say that you're not illegal. Thank you. If I if I could just comment on that, Councilwoman Miles, I, my intent was not to say that the council is doing anything illegal. I guess my comment was the co the compliance in the form of which these applications are being reviewed. It is currently being reviewed and approved as a legislative process, and it's not. It, that's 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 my that is my interpretation as a zoning administrator. Uh, it was never my intent to say that the council is doing something illegal. I'm saying that the process that the out that the zoning order is currently outlined is more of a legislative process than an administrative process. So just to clarify. Okay, thank you, Councilman Brown. So I, I would like to take this time to thank Mr. Capers uh, uh, on his thorough review of a lot of the town code, uh, being on the planning commission for a while. Uh, I, I've, I've watched him just bring up things that may, they, may not be illegal, but it's just not uh, routine or kosher with, with the way towns and city operates. So I, I think I, I agree with, with uh, Councilwoman Miles uh, how we say things here on the council can be received or perceived a different way. So I do agree with that, but I, I really believe what uh, Mr. Capers is doing, you're doing a good job in reviewing the town code and bringing it to the attention of, of, of the town council. Uh, one point that I would like to make is on the waiver process. Uh, if we're going to designate an agent to review the site plans as normal, which I agree with, uh, I would love to see a procedure for waivers because what we're saying there is that person who we designate as uh, the, the approver has the full authority to say whether a site plan can be waived or not. And that is a little loose. So uh, I, I wouldn't want that to be a, a problem when it comes to uh, some people getting waivers and some people not. Brown, just to comment on that, um, you are absolutely right. I think um, the, the language is there, it's the way it's written in, in the legal sense, but you're absolutely right. There is a process in waiving uh, any modifications to a site plan. The applicant has to justify and show a reason for, for the, the waiver request. And this is the same process that is done for any waiver modification for any um, other uh, part of the zoning ordinance or even state requirements for, for instance, for VDOT. Uh, the applicant is on the applicant, the onus of the applicant to show a uh, proper justification in order before it's waived. It's just not, you just don't waive it on this merit. We have to waive it based on the appropriate justification. Okay, Ms. Pandek, I see your hand up over here. This blue hand, the blue hand over here in this box. I'm sorry, I didn't use my yellow hand. I apologize. I should take my other hand down. Um, uh, to, to Councilman Brown's point, just for, for your reference uh, on the council, as you look at this way, it's in section 70-547 of the underlined language. Um, and it actually is a better articulation of uh, a strict requirements for a waiver than what is in the current um, ordinance at 70-538. So uh, those five criteria, if you look at those are, are as Mr. Capers just said, um, fairly strict criteria as to what would justify a waiver. Okay, that's on page 41 of your packet if you were looking for it waiver requirements. All right, did uh, anybody else have any uh, any other questions before we open up the public hearing? Any other questions? I don't see any blue hands and I don't see any physical hands. So I didn't miss anybody this time. All right, at this time, we're gonna open up the public hearing. Is there anybody in the audience that wants to speak to 
uh, this ordinance change? Uh, raise your hand now and I will bring you in for your public comment time. Okay. For once, for twice, and we are closing the public hearing. All right. Council, any uh, further discussion on this before we look for a motion? Okay, seeing none, uh, Mr. Capers, did you have anything else to add? Uh, no, Mr. Mayor. Okay. All right, so we're looking for a motion to uh, approve, an uh, ordinance approving zoning tax amendment ZTA 2021-002 to chapter 70. Article five of the code of the town of Dumfries, the zoning ordinance to designate the Dump director of planning and community development as the town council's agent for the review and approval of site plan applications to establish standards for the waiver of site plan requirements by the director of planning and community development and to make minor editing amendments to the zoning ordinance relating to site plans. All right. Making the motion. I move. So moved by who's that? Councilman Fields Brown. Who did that? Brown. Brown. Councilman Brown. Who's, is there a second? Second. second. Council, Councilman. What's that? I said second, but I'm Councilman okay. Neville. Council. Councilwoman Neville. Got it. All right. So motion made by Councilman Brown. Second by Councilwoman Neville. Uh, seeing no further discussion, I will call for the question. Uh, Councilman Pete. Yes. All right, Councilman Brown? Yes. Councilman Fields? Yes. Councilwoman Miles? Aye. Councilwoman Neville? Aye. Vice Mayor? Yes. That's a yes for me. That motion carries uh, seven to zero. All right, next on the agenda is the ordinance to amend chapter 54 Subdivision ordinance of the town code, Mr. Capers. Did I get that right? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you, well, Mr. Mayor. Um, the the agenda, the next agenda item uh, is a different application. However, the um, conclusions and findings were the same as the last agenda item. Um, staff requests that if there isn't any uh, public speakers that are listed for this particular item, staff requests that the council waive the staff presentation. So move. There it is. All right. Any questions from the uh, council? All right. Seeing no questions, I will open up uh, the public hearing for this particular item. Is there any members uh, wishing to speak? Please raise your hand. And again, this is for um, for the town to review the approval of site plan application to establish st standards for waiver of the site plan by the director of planning and community development and to make minor edits. Is that right? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Okay. All right, seeing none in the public, I'll come back over to the council. Council, any uh, final questions or comments? All right, seeing none. Uh, I welcome a motion to uh, amend ordinance, a ordinance to amend chapter 54, subdivision ordinance of the town code. A move. A move. Second. It's moved by the vice mayor, second by Councilman Fields. No <clears throat> further discussion. I call for the question. <clears throat> Councilwoman Miles. Aye. Councilwoman Deville. Aye. Councilman Brown. Yes. Councilman Fields. Yes. Councilman Pete. Yes. Vice Mayor. Yes. And that is a yes for me. Next on the agenda is a resolution to authorize a public hearing for resolution of RZA 2018-002 and a conditional use permit 2020-002 for Harbor of Quantico Creek. Mr. Cape. Uh, 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Staff presents a resolution for the town council to authorize the town manager to schedule a public hearing for a rezoning amendment application, RZA 2018-002, and a concurrent conditional use application, CUP 2020-002, the harbor at Quantico Creek. The rezoning application amendment, RZA 2018-002, and concurrent CUP application, CUP 2020-2020, 002 was filed by the Community Housing Initiative Incorporated to amend the approval of the rezoning application REZ 2018 002 that was granted by the Town Council in 2018. In approving this resolution, the Town Council will authorize the Town Manager to advertise for public hearings to consider rezoning an application amendment REZA 2018 002 the concurrent conditional use application, CUP 2020-002, will authorize the Department of Public of Planning and Community Development to provide a staff report and a recommendation to the Planning Commission and Town Council, will authorize the Planning Commission to hold a public hearing to review and provide a recommendation on April 12, 2021, and also will allow the Town Council to hold a public hearing to consider amendments and Planning Commission recommendation on April uh, 22, 2021. And 21. Uh, this concludes my presentation of this resolution, and I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Yeah, I guess can you go back to the map and just show everybody where that property is so that everybody you don't mind? Thank you. Can you see my screen, Mr. Mayor? I can see it. The vicinity. Give us a. Uh, so it's a, uh, but it's not on Route One. It's off. No, of uh, Mr. Mayor. It's off of Curtis Drive. Okay. Yeah, approximately uh, five thousand feet west of. Um, oh, behind and Curtis. Oh, behind the gas station. It's located here, as shown on this uh, vicinity map. Okay. This is Route One here. Or Main Street route, route one southbound. Okay. So public here. Right. Are there any conditions on that? Uh what were the conditions on that? Do we know that we're, we're um, authorizing the public hearing for? Uh Mr. Mayor, we, we're still staff is still evaluation, evaluating, sorry, the rezoning application amendment um and also the CUP. Um we haven't um we are still in uh, talks with the applicant in considering proffers and also uh, development conditions. So we don't have that information to present at this time, uh, but we will provide a full recommendation staff report on the conditions and proffers and the merits of the application at the time of the public hearing. We're just advertising the public hearing and we'll get everything at the public hearing that we need. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. Okay, council, any uh, questions? Let me make sure I didn't miss no blue heads. All right, so uh, seeing none, uh, we don't need a public hearing for this because we just need to vote on <laughs> moving this to a public hearing. Yes, Mr. Mayor. All right, so uh, I welcome a motion to uh, for this resolution to authorize a public hearing for the uh, RZA 2018-002 and the CUP 2020-002, the Harbor at Quantico Creek. So moved. Moved by Councilman Second. Fields. Second by Councilman Pete. All right, any further discussion? All right, seeing none. All right, Councilman Pete. Yes. Councilwoman Miles. Aye. Councilman Brown. Yes. Councilwoman DeVille. Aye. Councilman Fields. Yes. Vice Mayor. Yes. And that's a yes for me. That motion carries seven uh, zero. Next on our agenda is uh, Mr. Capers, a resolution to appoint uh, Shakar Mabad to the Board of Zoning Appeals. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. Uh, 
the Department of Planning and Community Development would like to present a resolution for the town council to appoint a member or to nominate a member to the town uh, board of zoning appeals. This resolution is for the town council to nominate Shakara Maba to the board of zoning appeals for a term to expire November 13th, 2023. Staff has carefully considered Ms. Mubah requests for nomination and has concluded that Ms. Mubah meets the qualifications to be appointed to the BZA as a member in accordance to the town zoning ordinance and the BZA bylaws. This concludes my presentation for this resolution. I can answer any questions you may have. Uh, Ms. Pandek, I saw your hand up first. You, you gotta unmute yourself so we can hear you though. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just wanted to make clear that if the council uh, decides to approve this resolution, then we would send uh, a request to the circuit court to appoint uh, Ms. Mubar to the BZA. Uh, this is not an appointment that the council can make directly. Uh, just to Ms. Panic's point, I, I believe I made that clear in the presentation. This is a nomination, not an appointment. All right, who else? Somebody else had a question or comment? Okay. Seeing the council has no questions. All right, so we're looking for uh, approval of the resolution uh, to recommend appointment uh, by the circuit court with our zoning. Councilwoman DeVille? So moved. Okay, it's been moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay, second by the vice mayor. All right, seeing no further discussion, uh, I'll call for the question. Councilwoman Mouse. Aye. Councilman Pete? Yes. Councilman Brown? Yes. Councilman Fields? Yes. Councilwoman DeVille? Aye. Vice Mayor? Yes. That's a yes for me. The motion carries 7 0. All right. Next is an introduction item. It's an ordinance to authorize the town manager to execute a lease agreement for town owned property at 17739 Main Street and to schedule a public hearing for April 6th. Mr. Rogers, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, we're just looking for a motion from the council to uh, schedule the public hearing for this item uh, on April the 6th. So moved. Second. Okay, it's been moved by Councilman Phil, second by Vice Mayor. All right. Hey, we do it like that at the um, MPTA meeting too. Now we take discussion after the motion. <laughs> All right. Is there any uh, discussion on the motion? All right. Seeing no discussion, I'll call for the uh, uh, the, the question. So I, I asked the question, you know, because it's exciting. During a pandemic, to be able to find a tenant, I think that's amazing. One because nobody has been written. Uh, what type of um, organization are we bringing into the building? Um, this is a technology firm that is based in Texas, um, and the uh, the proposing to pay market rate. Um, so we're excited to be able to uh, to make this happen. So if it is council's pleasure following the public hearing on the 6th, um, the lease will execute immediately following. And that will put us just about at almost 100% occupy. Almost. Yes, almost. Sir. We have one little unit left on the third floor. That's that's exciting to hear uh, on this this type of thing. All right. I'll call for the question at this point. Seeing no further discussion. Councilwoman Leville. Aye. Councilman Brown. Yes. Councilwoman Miles. Aye. Councilman Fields. Yes. Councilman Pete. Yes. Vice Mayor Nickerson. Yes. And that is a yes for me. All right. I just need to check. Do you guys need a five minute break or you're good? Are we well, at, this, at, at this time, we're going to adjourn this meeting. That concludes our agenda for the night. I was just messing with y'all. <laughs> y'all have a good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.